I'm not enunciating clearly today. No, I'm I telling you, I need my ears cleaned. I have, Apparently, I have I'm lazy. Going well, I'm sleepy and I have lazy tongue. Like she's had Novocaine. Yeah. <laughs> shot into her tongue. <laughs> See, like, whole I, can't, size. I can't keep, I like that. It requires more energy to keep it, keep it tight. <laughs> I can't keep it tight. It's a lot of work keeping it tight. That's right. <clears throat> Kegels of the mouth. Anyway. <laughs> Hello. And welcome to the circus. <laughs> 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 that today we are outdoors where other people can hear us cheers um, nobody can hear us in the woods <laughs> in the woods except for those people yes, and probably maybe. those people <laughs> um anyone who decides to mow their lawn in the next oh, couple of minutes yeah that's why we're doing it as fast as we can <laughs> all right we're gonna get right through this <laughs> it's all right we're gonna make it really fast um so as you know um hopefully by now i would not know why you would be here if you didn't know. Um, but just in case, um, my name is Tiffany. I'm not usually the person that goes first and today I am. So we're rolling with it. <laughs> um, they call me Tiffany on the streets. So that's what I answer to. Um, I am the editor in chief of Roth and the Out Press. Um, what that means is that we publish things. Uh, we do that digitally for now. Um, we are looking into ways to expand that. Um, but if you're here, Probably information you have access. What don't you have access to? Oh, secrets. We're doing oops, secrets. Ooh, we're doing Where press we press secrets. secrets. Press what secrets? Press secrets. Um, I have no. Not I'm an open book. <laughs> Sadly, I am too. Well, we are not that interesting in our <laughs> intros. Right um, now, right? Well, I think you're interesting, okay. and I think you. Let me, me think of what if people don't know. Well, they know your style. You have impeccable style. Thank you. Um, what are other things? You're incredibly smart. They already know that. Hmm. They better. Dude, we got a new job. Well, they know that. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. No, she's I, an open book, y'all. I, Maybe I, we need to open it for questions. Anyways, <laughs> um, yes. Uh, quick recap. I got a new job recently, so there's been a big um, kind of shift in my life. Um, it's cool. It's exciting. Um, it, it makes me nervous, but I think I'm handling the anxiety a lot better um, with this than I have been at other jobs. So I will give myself credit in that department. I'm super proud of you. Kelly's very proud of me, um, which is very nice because people <laughs> don't often tell me that they're proud of me. So usually when she says it, I start crying. I'm going <laughs> to resist, resist that urge <laughs> at this moment um, because I'm on camera and I don't do that um, <laughs> unless the circumstances are extenuating. Um, let's see what else did we touch on. Yes, there was a fire across the street uh, from me um, yesterday morning, very early. And um, I would love to tell you all about it, but I slept through it uh, <laughs> and didn't find out what happened until they were already over hosing. Like they were up there. Just over hosing? Ooh. Well, thank goodness. That's <laughs> well, you can't under hose because if no. you leave anything, it can reignite once it dries. So once the fire is out, there's still like another hour of over hose. God, I have so many dirty things that I want to say right now, but I can't. Same. <laughs> I mean, you can. I know. What's ever stopped you? I'm trying to make her have less editing to have oh. to do. <laughs> I'm being conscientious of her time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And letting I was going to say overhosing. <laughs> I was just to continue on that. Overhosing is when you blow too big a load for the condom. That's true. That <laughs> that's, that's a talent I have taking a word and making a complete. Oh, I thought, you, I thought you were going to say that's a talent. Yeah, you that was very. <laughs> I know all about this. Watch what I can do. The expert over here. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, we need assistance. Um, yeah, so that's basically what's been going on with me. Um, and I'm going to let these two ladies tell you what's been going on with them. And then we're going to touch on the fact that we actually already shot this. And I will explain to them why we've been absent for Yes. Um, my name is Kelly Scott Reed. I'm the assistant editor in chief at the press, at the Rough on Y'all Press. Um, lots going on. We had a little party last weekend, which was okay. super fun. Um, right out here in Kelly's back right deck in the area. yard. Um, Those of you who follow my party threads will understand <laughs> that reference. There's a couple of you. You'll understand it. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> she was there for she was there. I can't even remember things from that day. That's what happens to me. I just, it's a blur. Um, 
God, I sent a lot of stuff, but really there's not that much. That's really it. A lot of music well, going to happen. Just summer. It's summertime Kelly, man. When summertime Kelly kicks in, it is all leisure all the time. I'm sure you've never seen me sit no. that long, but in the summer, I'm on that thing. Oh, I passed out. I'm reading books. It's the summer kicks in and I totally tune it down. How do you find time to do that? Especially with question. what you still manage to yeah. finish. Wow. No, it's just weird. I have a lot of energy and I'm really good at time management, physical time. There's my problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sign, really sign, me, sign me up for those classes. <laughs> but that's it for me. Mary Ann, what's going on? What's going on? Except funny story. I did tell you guys. I don't know if Kelly was there when I told you this when we. So we were coming to Kelly's party and my hair was driving me crazy. So I decided to trim it myself <laughs> with clippers. And I, I kind of <laughs> nipped a spot. <laughs> a little chunk out. A little, little chunk. And it's on the side. I can't hide it because it's where my part is. Oh my God. So I'm just waiting for that to grow back in. That's the best. That's what happens when you get impatient with getting a hair appointment oh. and you procrastinate. You know, something I can relate to that. I have <laughs> cut my bangs up to like here because I'm to like, the upper. <laughs> well, because you're trying to fix it. Yeah. And you expect it, so you got to do right. more. So, so like, I'm fairly decent at it, but then I'm like, okay, so there's this side. So this side has to come up, right? <laughs> so then you go in on that side, but now this side is longer than this side. So you're like, okay, well now it, uh, let me, let me fix this up. <laughs> And what happens yeah. is you wind up with bangs like right here, like you have like a, a headband of bangs in the front. <laughs> um, so FYI, uh, we did record this book club previously. Um, and we may have mentioned it on social media, which may have led you to wonder where the hell it was. Mm -hmm. Um, we did it about a few weeks ago. Yeah, month it ago. was a month ago, month I ago. think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Um, we did it about a month ago. I remember it being right around the time of several mass shootings and other terrible events and weirdness going on and um full transparency we were not happy with the way that it came out uh the vibe was off because we were not happy right <laughs> all right so it was really just us being like yeah here's a book read it i don't care which yeah, it was is really good outing. which is I was against this book. I know. Yeah. So we exactly. never reflect so how it we wasn't, really felt. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't fair to the book. It wasn't fair to the author. It wasn't fair to you guys who may tune in for shenanigans or may actually want to be exposed to books. Yeah. Um, it, we're a dual purpose in that way. But <laughs> we do want to make sure that we're being fair. And also, like, we were not entertained. Like, I was not myself. And so we decided to ultimately shelve that. Um, and then stuff happens and life gets in the way. So a month later, we are here and we are reshooting um, the book club for this particular book. And I believe that that signals the timing in which I should introduce the book, the book. So this is, I don't know if you can see the cover. It's a pretty cover, so I will. Oh, oh Kelly, can, all right. Oh, you can get it if you want. <laughs> oh, it's a few. Oh, right up in there. Yeah. There you go. That's a good job. <laughs> um, so this book is called None of This Belongs to Me. It is by Ellie Sawatsky. Um, I have never spoken with Ellie. I am not familiar, and I really hope I'm saying her last name correctly. Um, but this book was nominated to us by Gina Viola, who is a friend of the press. Shout out, Gina. Um, and um, it is a collection of poems uh, divided into four sections. Um, kind of themed therein, not, not to a point where it's like obvious, but just grouped in a way that I think makes sense and, and flows very well. So this is a poetry collection, um, and we are going to take some time and talk about, um, things that we really like. So who wants to go first with their first favorite thing about the book? I'm just going to keep doing that. It's going to be really loud on camera too. It's going to sound like I'm cracking the lights. Yeah, I love going first. Okay, go Kelly's going to go first. Because then people can't take, oh, <laughs> say something like, oh, shoot, I'm oh, man, that was the one. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I do a lot of my reading at work, as you know, <laughs> instead of working, I do my reading. There were times that I had to actually, what's wrong? Nothing. I just oh whacked a bug right Woman. into my, <laughs> I was trying to shoot it away and it's now scrawling Well, you'll have lemon. to just, just take it out. Just, Fondle your lemon, just get it out of there. 
Say the little finger. <laughs> Jesus I'm age. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Jesus age coming from God. the woman who, who overhoses. <laughs> Jesus age cry. So you don't understand. I, I get, get mad at people. Yeah. Like Rob always says something. I go, Rob, Aww. really? And then I take it one step further. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Oh. All right. I did. Um, <laughs> oh, it's floating. I give up. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say. <laughs> You're reading at work. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm toiling away. <laughs> yeah, Marianne actually. We switched the, I used to do all that. Yeah, too, now I'm the toiler. Marianne, <laughs> Marianne actually works. Um, <laughs> Kelly and I, you know, we, we did, really didn't. And now I don't get to work with either of them, which really sucks. The new job is great, but yeah. I miss one. And, and mother, it's invited into my glass. <laughs> He can have a party with the guys, guys with the bugs. That's a bee. You guys yeah. with the bugs. Either way, this book. <laughs> Reading it at work. Reading it at work. Um, there were a few times where I actually had to stop because I was choking up. I feel very much like, for me, reading this felt like kind of a tour through times in my life, even though it's not mm. my life. Great. It was absolutely um, filled with things that I went, oh my God, I recognize that reference mm -hmm. or I understand the moment that she's there where I was when I felt that way. There was a deep connection for me. And I don't know the age of this person. I don't know what era she grew up in, but it felt very personal. Like it was the era I grew up in. And it, it wasn't probably, but there's some references. Like she references Jesus, et cetera, in a poem, which is a Wilco mm -hmm. song. And it just, oh my God, it just struck me. It lo that's just my general idea and then i'll let you guys go on and i just okay. kind of give a general yeah. high level of what it along felt those like. lines that is it the first poem in the book okay the first poem overnight to the hospital yes yes yes, yes. that that's the one where all the different places that that they've slept yes right? yes mm -hmm. and that's incredible what you were talking about about the connection and recognizing well, granted, the actual, all the different places. No, I've never slept in that many different places, mm -hmm. but I get the, but the feeling, because mm -hmm. um, what's the last line? Oh. I'm sorry, you have the book, so I'm making I know, that's cool, work. that's cool, that's cool. Hold on. Last line in the book. This is what it is to be awake of that poem. That's, this is what it is to be awake. Right, in the chair beside my father's bed. Yes. This is what it means to be awake. And, yep. and yeah, that I've been there, literally. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. the whole poem just brings that connection to it yeah it's beautiful it's a beautiful poem. I agree um I made a note about the overall vibe of the book before I dive into um specifics um my feel of this was that it is eloquent and understated um in spite of some fairly heavy subject matter nothing felt heavy-handed it felt kind of natural and mm -hmm. organic enough there was nothing overwrought it wasn't it it you didn't get the sense that it was someone was diving too far in um I think I think to kind of piggyback off what you're saying what makes it relatable is the fact that it isn't it's it's kind of everyone's experience tied up in that experience mm -hmm. um and I'm inclined to believe that people have more in common than they think they do mm -hmm. um so I feel like that's a, that's a good example. And no yeah. wasted words. Like you were saying, no. yeah. Oh, not a wasted word. And some words that were just right. Mm -hmm. um, I'll try to remember as you're going, I'll remember more about what words those were, um, where I go, Oh, that was perfect right yeah, there. That word there was play. no other word that could ever take the place of that mm -hmm. um, on a very micro level. Like, Ooh, those little details that were throughout and that's, this. That's where it is for me in poetry mm -hmm. it's it's the little details it's something tight something that kind of snaps mm -hmm. along as you read it and you're right like there would be no other way to say that without you know going on mm -hmm. you know for a paragraph or whatever like keeping it keeping it tight like that mm -hmm. why do i keep talking about keeping it tight <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Real that's the theme keeping it tight, keeping keeping it it tight. tight. hey boys, hey boys. <laughs> keeping it tight <laughs> Literally and literally, 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 or literally. There we go. Is that a word? No, I made it up. I, so. I think that is a word. Literarily. How would you say that? How else would you say that if you were trying to use it? Literarily. Wouldn't it be literally? 
isn't literally meaning exactly like yeah, yeah but i thought you were uh, i thought you were talking about literature yeah it was literal literally, so literally or, or literally or, i don't think it's a word <laughs> it can't be a word it's so hard to say uh, it's, yeah, Ellie talking it's an adjective okay of relating to or dealing with literature literarily okay Beauteous. I didn't make a word up. Because there would be no other way to say it. There would be no other way to, how else would you? Okay, you're right. Sorry. Can you use it in a sentence? Sorry, it's not a spelling bee. Yes, I just did. She did. Literally or literally. literally. I don't describe something literarily. Thank you. Literarily is an adjective that describes <laughs> those are my favorite kind of sentences. <laughs> it describes something of or relating you to. Mean you want a definition, right? Okay. Um, who wants to go first? Uh, diving into some like standout. But I already started, started, so well. Okay. Um, do you want to go? No, I just did. Remember, I brought up the rhino. Right, rhino. Yes. Rhinocerotic. I have, that, have one that one too. written down. Dead. Yep. Are you freaking kidding me? The whole, I just, the whole poem was noted. Yeah. Why don't you read it? Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> Do you not have your glasses? Those are my glasses. Okay, hold <laughs> for the record. Um, Rhinocerotic. All night they feed outside our cabin, hog shuffling between silver oaks, fever trees, hooved feet in short grass, tearing the earth. I crouch in the doorway, watching. Remember to breathe. Come back to my own rough body. Scarred teenage skin. Breasts that rose in the dark. 16, muggy with hormones. Drunk on animalarials. Anti-malarials. And, and lack of sleep. The night moves, greenish and muscled. And me with it. Far from home from my strange young boyfriend. I want to tell him I'm ready to press into something, to bite and break the skin. This is the part that made me choke up. To drink the juice of a moon full to bursting before it thins to a sun bleached rib. All night, the dark lines of rhinos in the cabin, the pulsing ultrasound of a gecko inside a lampshade. I love the Come imagery. On, that was the other thing that I don't think we talked about with the overall feel of the whole book is the use of imagery mm -hmm. throughout it is it's tight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the dried rip. It's like, just beautiful. come on. Mm -hmm. The the again, I have a thing for the end of poems apparently. Yeah. Because that well the that's, the thing, that's where they too. save the gut punch. Yeah. For yeah, that's you have they... to have the punchline, whether it's the punch of a poem or punch of a joke. It has to land. It has to land. And th this to me is Oh my God, just, I've been there, <laughs> you know, that feeling of that youthful, uh, almost overbearing lust. Mm -hmm. Rare. Yeah. yeah. It's a rare feeling. Yeah. You don't get that super often. It, very, yeah. You get it super and often. Anti-malarials, the heat, the mugginess, mm -hmm. I love the, the, the I green. Love, I love hormone, like a hormonal feeling being described as muggy. Yeah. That really sucks. Oh, yeah, out. yeah, yeah. And really the cool. description, what is it? The green and muscle? What was that line? Ah, preempt my idiocy. Hold on. It's right in the middle. Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, go, okay. The night moves greenish and muscled. Yeah. And me with it. The night, describing the night as greenish and muscled. I thought, and this awesome. line, far from home, from my strange young boyfriend. Well, aren't they all? But that's the point. <laughs> it's genius to me to describe a boyfriend at that age as strange because they really freaking are. Well, and it also no it also could be um, like strange to her uh, too. Yeah, because it sounds like they're moving towards something that they haven't, but they haven't done anything. Right, so it's kind of that unfamiliarity, that mm -hmm. uh, unknown. Strange. Yeah, Stranger. strangeness. Yeah. I'll let you Okay. Um, Ooh. what page do I need to be on? No, I need better glasses. I think whatever, to write page numbers. I think whatever Kelly has is contagious around here. <laughs> Denial. <laughs> um, okay. 
so this is another kind of, I think why this stuck out to me, it references like a sort of coming of age and like body acceptance or not, um, which I think again is relatable. All the specifics are given here. I think this is something that um, most people go through on some level at some point in their life and it stuck out to me. Uh, this is from Minaki Lodge. Um, we go every weekend, summer 95, drive northwest until the Winnipeg River opens to Gunn and Rough Rock Lakes, Trembling Aspen, Black Spruce, Anne Marie's dad owns the lodge. It says it's remote enough for a surgical spa, and my dad, a doctor, agrees. They make plans for plastics, Botox, breast lifts, tucks, and peels. Anne Marie and I are tender new trees. Our mothers, Hers pregnant, pink and swollen. Mine willowy and linen, sip coffee and gossip. The hallways swallow our parents. We dawdle in the library, paddle the pool, hollow, clang of our voices. Chemical blue, side by side in the steamy change room, sway backed, shallow chested, trying to decide if we're pretty. Chandeliers, cathedral ceilings, buffets in the rotunda where hawks and elk heads mount the walls, prize-winning bodies, a bass and pike. Be like the polar bear, someone's northern trophy, sutured upright, taller than both our dads. So all of that was just brilliant. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the comparison between the um, animal trophies, mm -hmm. something called, yeah, all that. Uh, the, the, the mount, yeah, the head yeah. mount. It's, yeah. And the women's bodies as they're being planned for in terms mm -hmm. of plastic surgery and two young girls who are just kind of getting experience with their own and trying to decide what all of that means. Just that combination was powerful for me. And I loved it. Yeah. And I don't like reading things out loud. Thank you. You know, I've read for a long time. It's something I'm good at. I'm good at like four things. Reading is one of them. Two of them I can't talk about on camera. Yes, you can. If I can do it, you can. Do it. <laughs> one, of them, one of them is overhosing. So. <laughs> she does that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You are so on the fucking nose, dude. Yes. I what is the point of being subtle? Come on, man. Let uh, your free play story fly. For everyone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You teased it. I just hit it. You pitched it to me and I hit it out of the park. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Well, well you did that. kind of. Toss it right to her. <laughs> I said two things and she didn't know what two things I meant. I just assumed. Yeah. Well, I mean, so well, I would hope that you're just really, assuming. I really hit she was like, no, it was, it was needle point. That's right. right. And I didn't want to cook anybody. Oh, shit. I didn't want anybody to know about was, my needle point. I was, Damn you. I was scared that people we don't would, talk about the needle point. <laughs> I was scared people would think of me as a crafter. I don't know if the author is going to appreciate me talking about giving head while we're. Well, you weren't talking about it. It was. I, she, I, 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 she tossed it to me. I implied it. Implied We're supposed it. to be doing bits. If you toss <laughs> me a bit, God damn it, I'm going with it. She set me up for that on purpose. Everything is on purpose. <laughs> 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 you think I sit around and plan these things? Mm -hmm. I'm not. I guess. Tell you what I'm mm -hmm. gonna say today. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a joke, and Kelly's gonna hit the nail right on the head. And then we're gonna talk about that for five minutes. I'll play the shit. <laughs> Who is this inside the actor's studio? Like you think I got a script for this somewhere? <laughs> this is so well thought out, guys. I'm sorry. I have work. I have work orchestrated. <laughs> I have work orchestrated beautiful conversations. Just <sighs> Pitching balls, <laughs> keeping it tight. Marianne, would you like to go ahead with whatever? I don't to know how to follow this, to be honest. <laughs> oh, everybody's mad. Everybody's mad at me. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, I'm just I was just really shocked you got it right. Oh my God, that's so funny. Dude, it wasn't hard to guess. <laughs> okay, well, what do you think the other thing is that I can't say on camera? Smarties. Well, after. I don't want to guess wrong. I don't want to guess wrong either. <laughs> Come on, throw it at 
me. We're, we're really well, open I'm just today. saying, you said two. It was bound to be one of them. Mm-hmm. So the other one is a wild card, mm-hmm. in my opinion, mm-hmm. because it can't be obvious. Because there's nothing obvious about Tiffany. So it can't be well, obvious. Except for, except for that. No, because it's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing no, obvious joking. about it. Except with, for that. I, I think but you're good with your mouth. All right, Marianne, um, I'm going to step off camera to refill my wine because I don't yeah. think it's Do you want right to get over. rid of the bug in mine that I've been drinking around? Is she giving me orders to wait? Well, no, I was asking. I'm teasing. I will get you more wine. Oh, I can't believe it. It was, you ever played Can Jam? No. I've heard of it though. Do you ever? See what it is it? Play? Yeah, how do you, it. you know how you smack the Frisbee into the thing? Oh, it's yes. a Frisbee Yeah, game. well. That was what happened with the bug. I didn't mean to, but I ended up smacking it right into my wine. Does it not involve cans? Yeah. You're trying to get a Frisbee into a garbage can. Oh. And you can, if it's not, if it's going to go over, you can hit it in. I don't know. I've never played. All right. Sounds deep. All right. So we can cut all that if you need to. That's quite all right. (laughs) Uh, Marianne, why don't you go ahead with um, doing some reading? I'm not going to read it because it's a longer one. Oh, just read a chunky lot. Or a chunky lot. A chunky lot. All right, well, I hate jumping right into the middle. Um, Go ahead. It's called Finlandia. It's the one, um, it starts with two shots of Patron as I leave for Lisa, Lisa's Mormon family Christmas party. In her pink kitchen, I drink root beer, eat Amish fruit cake, and meet her new husband, a missionary. Uh, but the parts I really like, again, it comes back to the imagery and um, just things that are relatable where she talks about Lisa in the corner opens the black casket of our friendship, the sad, sour smell of mildewed velour, neglected brass, brass, musk of a high school music room. Those days we watched our faces thin and fattened in our trombones, yellow metal playing take five and fly me to the moon. Now, Finlandia. So just the imagery there of the, of opening their instrument cases and the, I don't know, the sad, sour smell of mildew. Mm-hmm. The lure. smell? Yeah. Which is, which is like, I know what that smells like. Like, I'm there. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you in that moment. That's exactly Especially it's time with travel. The, exactly. It's time travel. You're people there. people who mm-hmm. kind of, it feels like she's, especially since she's got to take a few shots to go to the party, she's obviously feeling a little out of touch with her old friend. So mm-hmm. I just thought that was really neat. And then the, the way she portrays um, them playing together the intimacy of it, Mm -hmm. where um, at the end, when the song ends, we pull back smiling, touching our swollen mouths, shy as if we'd been kissing. I just love that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. like like if you pulled back and you're like, oh, I just did it, but it's, yeah. The intimacy of that connection with someone else. And I feel like that's a good word to use for all of these poems, to be honest with you, is that there is a level of intimacy that you don't always, always get from poetry. You don't. Um, I feel like there's a, there's a connectivity, there's an open door. Um, mm-hmm. and maybe it's because I can contrast and compare experiences depicted in these poems with my own life experiences, or maybe it's just because it's written in such a way that it is mm-hmm. kind of accessible. accessible, universal, right? Yeah. Um, for everyone, regardless, if you have some piece of this in you, and that's what I look for when I read poetry, I look for something that hits right where I'm at or where I have been at or whatever the case may be and to find that someone else may have also been there is fantastic because that gives you that connected feeling even if they haven't if they're able to (laughs) speak to you through these these very specific kind of vines these very intimate very personal feeling stories then that's that's what matters like I'm not she, to cut all that out. She's I'm not ex- making any sense. I know you made perfect sense. I had too much fucking wine. You should, you had um it's interesting because you're talking about the the experiences you're sharing. It's almost like she's writing very intimately and detailed about a universal truth. Yeah. So and the, exactly. And you said it much better than I did. That is the, that is exactly what mm-hmm. I was driving at. Is mm-hmm. that these may be her experiences, they may not, mm-hmm. right? Like she very well could have lived all of this and this may be her life on mm-hmm. the page. It may not be. Mm-hmm. But there is something in every poem that is a part of mine mm-hmm. and, yes. and, and, and not a surface level part of mine, mm-hmm. but yeah, a, a maybe deep, different. right. But also not really. Yeah. Right. Because I, I can be in that surface. music one. 
Yeah. Like I can, I can see that. I can feel that from my, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's a little piece of it that is so familiar and so intimate. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like that's incredibly rare In, in the best poetry. Like, yeah, you can read it and you can see, okay, I understand why the narrator is experiencing this. Right. Like I, I have a, I have a feel for that, but to have this um, um, deeply emotional connection with the work, I think is rare. Yeah. And, and you're saying that like at a very fundamental detailed level, it's very similar. Um, it goes to show you how, like you were saying earlier, how interconnected, pretty much similar all people are on some basic mm-hmm. level. There's a thread of universal truth mm-hmm. that runs in the details, like you said, very tiny bit. And again, not so much too, um, it, that it really does. There were times when, you know, you get that hitch in your throat when you inhale, mm-hmm. I'll read something out loud and it'll catch me by surprise, especially like I'm reading to Rob. I'm like, listen to this. It's great. I will start to say it in, a, I can't get the words out because mm-hmm. it hits hard. I have yeah. multiple times in this book, this collection where I felt that way. Like, holy crap. That is like, oh my God, that's so exactly how I felt, but it's not saying she's like spoon feeding you feelings, right? You interpret no. for yep. what she's saying the feeling. It's really awesome. There's kind of awesome. a, there's a mastery. Yeah. Yes. It's awesome. That. And, um, I thought I wrote a poem one time and then I read <laughs> this book. <laughs> oh, uh, know, right? I, was, I realized that I don't know what I wrote, but it was not poem. <laughs> yes, so, are good they are not all like this i know mine's not like this this is Some definitely a, a what's what of good poetry like oh that's done this way this mm-hmm. is done that way also there's no like sometimes you see a style mm-hmm. in somebody like like oh I, I do this this and this that's cool but in this it kind of changed up a little bit yeah the voice changed yeah. a tiny bit and i really thought that was cool too so it was different sides there was like a more well, and I think that's, I think that speaks to how, the way that it was arranged. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that was an expert move too, mm-hmm. is to arrange things in a way where the voice tracks through these different sections, but changes between. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of, I don't want to say maturation. I don't necessarily oh. know if it's, I don't know if that, I, I would yeah, say that that point. was the point, but mm-hmm. I think that was kind of like my idea of it is like, I'm feeling this narrator change. Mm-hmm. Grow, yep, through their experiences, mm-hmm. which I think is beautiful. I mean, I don't read poetry always to learn things. I don't read it for education necessarily. Is there educational poetry? I'm sure there is. Yeah, there has to be. Yeah. I consider like Shakespeare historical. You gotta learn about it. Well, that's true. I, to, so I read all of Shakespeare's work at nine um, because I was an idiot. Um, I thought it was cool. Now, to preface this by telling, but it got her beat up every single day. <laughs> Do you know it's funny? I've never been in a physical altercation in my life. Do you know how many times I came close though? Like, really deserved to have my ass beat. They, they all, men, they all involved men too. So I blame them. Um, but no, I tend to just use. <laughs> Ew. Um, I tend to just use my words. And, um, but that can also Sometimes lead to just getting just a uh, What was I talking about? Before? I don't know. Oh, man, that was a tangent. <laughs> before, I ta- before I started talking about not getting my ass beat. Shakespeare at nine. Yeah, Shakespeare. And I'm going, what the heck? Shakespeare at nine. That's a really good, that'll be the title of your autobiography. Mine is Justice is My Hobby. Yours is Shakespeare at nine. I thought mine was Screaming for a Limerick. Screaming for a Limerick. I, I, a I like Justice at nine. <laughs> um, yes. Which is nine years old. Um, I decide that my goal for the year is to conquer Shakespeare. Um, and I did that. Uh, did I understand all of it? No. And this was pre Google. Did you understand? I think I, well, so there's, I'm I'm curious. Um, I have a, I went to borders, I think at the time or whatever. And I bought, my parents bought, I didn't buy anything else. Nine. Um, a collection that had, um, very clear notations in the back almost like a cliff's notes with like a glossary it wasn't and the riverside was it it made that's big. i have that up i can see I no riverside. these were individual they oh, okay. were they were in a collection but they were each oh and they looked each. all old time yeah my yeah. dad had that collection yeah. and i try to read them i don't know what's going on yeah i can see them in my head i don't know who the publisher was um i'll find out but 
Um, yeah, so that's that's what I did. So I read, I have read Shakespeare's work, not realizing I was going to be assigned it in high school. Um, I've read it ten times, fifteen times, all of them, each of them. Kind of over it. And plays. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Started with the plays, and then I thought. I did this and I'm smart. So I'm going to move on to the song. Again, first pass, probably didn't get much of it. I had a vague understanding of Hamlet. I had a vague understanding of Tommy and Julia. I was wondering when Lion King came out, if that helped. <laughs> no. Um, the Lion King came out a couple of years before and I did love it, by the way. Um, but I will tell you it did. Um, Boz Lerman's Romeo and Juliet with... Um, uh the Leonardo DiCaprio on Claire. Oh my gosh. How old were you when that came Nine. Out? But to say I I didn't watch it because I was busy breastfeeding. Right? <laughs> Okay. She was nine when that movie came she out. She was as old as my daughter almost. I want to say <laughs> no, it, I might have been eight. Oh my god, that does not make She's it just being an better. asshole now, guys. She's, she's just getting just, younger. <laughs> she's just giving younger and younger times. That's all she's doing, trying to torture us. Let me find out because I saw it in the theater and I wasn't supposed to. Are you not gonna put your kid on? Yeah. Because now I'm curious. Because I don't know where I, um, I just like when she started talking about reading Shakespeare. Nine, I'm trying to remember like, what was I doing at nine? It was not reading Shakespeare. I had no Probably friends in real around. life and I was in the neighborhood. Around. I was always running around. I wasn't allowed to. I wasn't allowed to leave my front yard. And I lived in a trailer park where there's nothing to do in the front yard. So I didn't go oh, into the front yard. We had yard. a big old woodsy backyard. <laughs> trailer Park 1996 <laughs> makes me not. Trailer Park Shakespeare. I like that. I think that's a great idea. I love that. What trailer the, Park Shakespeare. What am I going to use that for? I, I, I didn't know. give you permission. Uh-oh. I made it up. <laughs> Have it. I'm cheesy. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> You're lucky I love you because I'm telling you right now. Oh, I'm going to use that. Are you though? Are you going to use Trailer Park Shakespeare? No. I am. I'm just kidding. I'm in a trailer park. Why? Because that babysitting my nephews. Okay. I did she too. was Trailer Park by proxy. Yeah. <laughs> She had to put on plays in the yard. Oh my <laughs> god, trailer park by <laughs> Wait, can I use that? Yes. Okay. Dude, you can always, I gotta make up a name for myself. Dude, I'm yeah, a trailer mean, park name. I don't know what we're doing with these, but I'm making graphics for all of these. Oh yes, trailer park proxy. Yes. That's gonna be on my to-do Shake, list. Trailer park Shakespeare. Oh that my god. Hilarious. I think I just flashed the camera. Oh. Dude, that's um, kind of freaking great. So that to answer the burning question, I don't know what we were talking about. It was 1995. Okay. Okay. And I was not <laughs> oh even so so looked. Yeah. Oh my God. I had a black tooth because my tooth was knocked like out. a weird cutie doll. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I had a black tooth. Yeah. Uh, my dad yeah. knocked my tooth out when we were playing one day. And of course, in the 70s, we didn't have a lot of money. So we didn't have dental. And so I walked around with a black tooth my front tooth and then they finally pulled it and I had no tooth and I I swear to god for years so all my pictures I'm gonna do the Kelly impression of the school picture let me get my hair completely matted like this (laughs) like this hiding your teeth yep that was Kelly (laughs) why did you why did you smile like because I she wanted to hide a smile, but I had the black tooth. I feel like that's worse. That could be my pirate name, black tooth. I feel like Why that's worse. You could smile with your mouth closed without. Dude, I can't. I was for. I smile big. You guys know I'm like you. Yeah. Yeah. I have a big wide smile. So what happens? I have to literally clamp my to shut it from opening. <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> All shy. It looks like you I like tried to get my good angle back something. in the day when you didn't get a choice to look at the picture. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. And you could be like this in all types of shit and mm-hmm. it's just printed. Mm-hmm. Kids got it so easy today. Not a bad shot. Always oh, looks great. Oh, like a hundred bad three. shots. You just delete right, it. Right, right. I, had a round, I, had, <laughs> I, I don't know if this was ever in fashion because let's face it, I was the youngest of eight kids. It was probably a hand me down. <laughs> but I had a plaid shirt that had a rounded collar. Okay. And like a almost like a pilgrimy kind they, of they but made it was kind of feminine it they made wanted to yeah. feminize but the, the flannel it wasn't flannel but it's it was kind black. of to it's be, kind of to be cool. fair it needs it because every <laughs> well, time i put on yeah, the but, flannel i look like joe dirt so, so, lumber, lumberjack action that's right lumberjack action keeping it tight up. 
and this might have been the decade of popped collars, but this wasn't a popped collar. Nice. That was naive. Everybody popped the collar. I was collar. like, and they, so that was my fourth grade picture with my stupid collar up. Maybe they popped collars in other generations. Yeah, yeah, the fifties they, they did. did they? Oh yeah, yes. the fifties, like the eighties were just a rehash of the fifties. Yeah. yeah, So if you could kind of say, well, did they do it? And so that's the fifties. Yeah, they would have been. So when does that come back full force, or has it already? We could start it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's pop our collars. Things around collar. my neck. Oh. Ugh. Collared shirts are often button-up shirts. That doesn't work here. No nope. here, it doesn't fit. Nothing. And fits. I guess you know, I get if it's here, it does not fit here. Yeah. Don't make shirts button-up for shirts. people with brass. Mm-hmm. Button-up shirts. They don't make button-up shirts for people with breasts. No, because they always gap right there. They gap, they pull, or they don't button at all. So it has to be a very deep V. So you're at work, on a work call with your deep V. <laughs> or you have to do what I like to call the Christian school, which is you put a tank oh top on it. Oh. Um, does anyone have anything else that they would like to say specifically about the book? Are there any pieces that you feel like we cannot end to this day without having mentioned. I don't know that I have a specific piece that I feel like reading because I'm terrible at reading when someone is listening to me do it. Goes a lot nicer inside the head, guys. Just FYI. The, mm-hmm. the come out is not the same as the go in. <laughs> um, but I will say that I made a note that I loved how seamlessly the sense of place flows through each of these poems. It almost feels like, and it may not be every single poem, but it almost feels like every poem is like designated to a location where you get that grounding from it. And for whatever reason, again, places I've never been, um, some places I have been, but most places I have not, you feel that sense. Like you, you, you come away with what you feel like is a real sense of place. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like, it's almost like the place is a, is an additional character. Mm-hmm. It's given. It's given characteristics. It's given personality. It's given sensibilities. All the senses are touched on in in these mm-hmm. at one. Some not all at the same time, but like just smells mm-hmm. and feelings and uh, correlating physical physical reactions with almost nature mm-hmm. like it just there's just and like, i noted that it's so did you really that. yeah i okay. said i said they give a natural grounding without being a quote nature poem that, oh my god dude so that that's really big for me that was really big for me because i think you're smarter with this stuff than i am <laughs> so i'm like yay she's wrong I touched on a tiffany thing don't tell ksr she's wrong okay so what don't i'm saying is but she is i am Okay, that is exactly it. I couldn't really put my finger on it until I just started talking. Mm-hmm. But there's just it feels like like nature poetry yep. without without it, it being yeah. like I took a hike and these yeah. were the trees yeah. and and I scoured oh, this. It's so I foraged cool. like you don't. It, it's not that type of poem. It's it's the fact that it grounds you in a place mm-hmm. and it grounds you with all of these very relatable, intimate, mm-hmm. intricate elements that we've already had touched on i i just i love that so that's my general takeaway yes um that was just one of my more general notes marianne you got anything um not any general notes like that i just think apparently was writing down my favorite lines from like each poem okay well share share, share with the boat one, share one the, of them the i like the from is it how do you say this Uro boros Uro boros mm-hmm. where is that it's the snake thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ouroboros. Yeah. I think so. I think that's right. I just love this line. Just the sound of it. The um, thrust into this thistle stitch ditch of adulthood. Yes. Yes. I, just... I mean, this is the kind of stuff that we're talking about with these tight rubber band lines. Yes. Where I just read that and I think, God, I've never written anything like that. No. Nope. I've never written anything that smart. And that beautiful because the way that plays with your tongue and your mind, mm-hmm. like that's beauty to me. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think that's gorgeous. I'm sorry, go ahead. Another Moral one I had was um, from, I think it's from Crystals, if I can read my writing correctly. Um, if there were a couple lines in that. These years as these nanny, her scraping against my, my nurture. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was mm-hmm. it's like that the is... nature versus nurture thing and that she's fighting the nurture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. then another line later with what bits of my mother insist in me. 
I just love the use of yes. the word yachtsist. Yes, exactly. And so, and that's another one of those things that I just feel. Our mothers yeah. could have mm-hmm. been totally different. We are totally different, but that. But we that all feeling, know that. 100%. We all know what you know. In in the things that irritate me about my mother, obviously, are the things that are most like myself. Yeah. And it's and I apologize to my terrifying. children all the time for it. I, I constantly <laughs> saying kids. Just I me. I have taken additional steps to eradicate or to leash. Maybe not eradicate. Maybe there is no. Maybe that's not possible. Um, I don't think I have answers to questions that you know doctors don't have, therapists don't have. <laughs> um, but I will say that I have had to leash all of that inside of myself through a lot of work. Because nature or nurture or both are very strong. Yes. yes. Influences. And you find them sneaking up where you don't expect them to be. Oh, and while she's looking, I also just love some of the titles. Like, what is that one? Rhinocerotica? Yeah. yeah. That title. And then Spotify My Body. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. I just, I don't oh, even know. Oh my God. That that's the one with, but I love the she's title. Seven oh, in it. Fifth. That one's, I love that one. Ooh, she listened to Wilco. Is this a kindred spirit? I don't know. It's pretty mindful how I'm sitting. And of course, the sun is like all in my face. So, so I know that you guys have all been waiting uh, with bated breath to hear um, our next book club selection. We are happy to announce that we are going to be um, reading and book clubbing Washed Away by Shiksha Data. Um, who is a good friend of the press. We have published um, Shiksha before. Um, and I go gather at her on social media all the time. <laughs> so she should likely not be surprised um, that she is our next victim. Um, just, dun, dun, dun. Are you scared? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Cool. Um, no, we're very excited. Um, so the book is on the way and we will be uh, cracking into that. We are going to be getting more into doing these on a regular basis as we did before. Yeah. Um, life has just, I don't think we should make any promises. Yeah, little bit. no promise. <laughs> We're in summertime, Kelly mode. Yeah. Right. I make the time to I do this. So I, I hang out. I feel like, like this. this is this is about as summertime Kelly as you can get. <laughs> like we're oh, literally yeah. we're literally sitting here, but the only thing we're not doing is sleeping. That's true. We are give summertime. me a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> I know. I have I mean, I've supplied them with wine and sun, and now we're gonna. That lounge yeah. over there is looking very comfy. <laughs> so, in case I didn't mention this earlier, I don't think I did. We kind of just flew through intros. Um, if you have any recommendations, we are always open for them. Um, we are getting to things um, kind of in the order that they've arrived, just because that feels fair. Um, but we will put the links and the email address in the description of the video. If there's anything that you would like to see us talk about, here are our goofy thoughts on. I really love that the sun is just why I keep saying we have to stop down because we're going to have shadows on me. Um, so we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us babble. Um, again, we're going to put the links to everything that you need if you want to pick up this book, um, as well as to Ellie's uh, social media. Uh, hopefully she was not um, totally offended by this. Yeah, hopefully she's speaking to us after this. I know. It's just, well, she's never she spoken to us before. before. Um, but I don't maybe know. she will now. Maybe she will. I don't know. And I hope you will return. Cheers. Cheers. Um, but we're going to put all the links to where you can buy this, as well as shouting out Gina Leola, who was the one that submitted this uh, suggestion to us a very long time ago. But this book was unavailable for a while, so we had to wait for it. Yes. Worth the wait, though. It was. It was, it was awesome. Um, so pick this book up. Um, what is it that you say? Smash the like button. Smash that subscribe and like and subscribe. Subscribe, like, and subscribe. <laughs> subscribe twice. Subscribe twice. Subscribe twice. Yeah. Like, twice. like as much as twice. you can. Subscribe. Yes. Like is once, a million but... times as many as you want. Ask Just keep hitting the button so it likes. You, it, you watch the videos, get a good laugh. Yeah, we're ridiculous, and that's part of the fun. But we also love to read and um, have made a good bit of our free time about reading and writing. In trailer shark, uh, <laughs> trailer shark, shark, uh, shake trailer shark, <laughs> trailer shark, <laughs> trailer shark. Trailer <laughs> shark. <laughs> There's another one. Trailer shark. Okay, that's the one for me. There you go. I'm trailer shark. <laughs>
you are Third, trailer park by Shakespeare, proxy. uh trailer park Shakespeare in your Shakespeare by, or trailer park by proxy. <laughs> I, I got it. All right. Proxy, got it. All right, you monkeys. <laughs> I don't know what we're I don't know what we're gonna do with this, but I feel like <laughs> graphics are in my future. I'm just gonna change yeah. some mine now. Anyway, yeah. thank you all for watching. Hi everyone. Um, Thanks. and I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. But due to our spirits, peace to all beings. That's right. My Namaste. soul honors your soul. Namaste. Bye guys. See you. Cheers. And the recording.